five major conferences in college football, plus Notre Dame and BYU as the two big independents. That's 64 teams total that make up the field. That's right, 64. 63 of those teams would love to be in the position where Ohio State is in right now. And not just because the Buckeyes are defending national champions, it's obvious, but the amount of talent, the amount of um, terrific recruiting that they've done, and of course, head coach Urban Meyer and his wisdom, as Ohio State, with 15 starters returning from that 14 national championship team, they look poised to perhaps get back to the college football playoff. And they have a schedule that's pretty favorable in doing so. Now, will Ohio State this year be like 95 Nebraska, which the 94 Huskers won the whole thing, and 95 Nebraska looked even better? Some consider that team the greatest team to ever play college football. And will it be like that team in Alabama in 2012, where they lost to A&M that year, but came back and walloped Notre Dame to win the school's um, second straight national championship in 10th overall. Ohio State could very well fall on that line. However, it's not always a guarantee that you're going to win the whole thing, even if you have a plethora of talent back from a national championship team. All you have to do is ask 2009 Florida, which was coached by Urban Meyer. The 08 team, which won the whole thing, had Tebow and you know Hernandez back, and they won all the regular season games only get thumped by Alabama in the SEC championship. And recently, last year, Florida State, the defending national champions that returned Jameis Winston and so many terrific players, Rashad Green as well, won their first 13 games, but struggled in a lot of those games to get wins. And, of course, that pattern caught up with them when Oregon thumped them in the semifinals. So Ohio State has to understand that, you know, there's going to be a lot of pressure on them. And last year in that semifinal, they were probably the one team of the four teams that you thought would have been least likely to make it out with the national title. But Ohio State got hot at the right time, and they ended up winning the whole thing. Big reason for that, in my opinion, was because of the ground attack. Ezekiel Elliott returns for the Buckeyes, and he had nearly 1,900 yards rushing a year ago. Of course, you know that um, he was also very good as far as yards per carry. As a matter of fact, he really, really brought um, the lever in that situation 6.2 yards per carry for him, and not to mention his 18 touchdowns. He is a Heisman Trophy candidate. He is a junior, but I would be stunned if he came back for his senior year. And, yes, I've already done some early schedule checking, and next year my Sooners play Ohio State in Norman next year. So, Elliot, you know, have a nice year, but please don't come back next year. Don't want to see you in Norman, at least not on the uh, Buckeye sideline. And it is a loaded backfield for Ohio State. Um, not just Ezekiel Elliott, but also to Curtis Samuel, who as a freshman did very well, six TDs for him. And you also return Dr. Wilson, who's a senior. And you'll also have uh, you know, Jalen Marshall, who they could use as a receiver too. Um, didn't see him much at the end of last season. That's because he had a foot injury against Michigan State and had to miss several games. Wide receiver, they're not quite as deep, but they're still talented. And you might remember this guy, Braxton Miller, the 2013 Big Ten Player of the Year at quarterback this past summer, decided to convert to a wide receiver. And I think that's good for Ohio State because they could use some high-quality um, receivers for either Jones or Barrett to throw to. And it'll also help um, Miller for his future, too, in case um, he wants to take his talents to the next level, the NFL. One heck of an athlete, and of course, dangerous in the open field. Now he'll be a wideout. Michael Thomas is your leading returning receiver. Um, after posting nearly 800 yards and receiving yardage. We mentioned that Marshall um, is back as well. Last season, Jalen Marshall, 38 receptions, almost 500 yards receiving. Um, now, there is a bit of a blow, though, for Ohio State. A guy that they were really counting on this year, who was irrelevant a year ago, Noah Brown, um, had a major leg injury, as I'm broadcasting this show on August 29th. That injury occurred just a few days ago. So the major league injury has kept him out for the 2015 season. So that hurts Urban Meyer's offense. And also, too, um, you know, Corey Smith, at least you have him back for his senior year. But last year he was limited, only 20 receptions. Teams are going to do their best to try to take away Ohio State's run. So whoever the quarterback is, we'll talk about in a second, either Barrett or Jones, they're going to have to realize that defenses are going to load up the box because right now they don't think that Ohio State can hurt them in the air, or at least not as much as they could on the ground. And that ground game is going to get a lot of attention. And this is the biggest reason, the offensive line, why Ohio State won the whole thing in 2014, in my opinion. They were able to create big holes, wear teams down, and you return four of the six from a year ago. And that does include um, Taylor Decker, second team All-Big Ten, and he has started 29 games in his career. He plays that left tackle position. 
Um, you'll also have coming back at the right guard, um, Pat Elfine, and he was first team all Big Ten a year ago at right guard. And at center, uh, Jacoby Bourne, he has leadership as well. He's a senior. And Billy Price, um, who started last year as a freshman, you'll have him at left guard. But you have to replace the right tackle um, in uh, Chase Barris after um, losing Daryl uh, Baldwin. He's moved on. And at tight end, I thought one of their biggest losses on this team, um, Jeff Hurman, um, you lose him, but you do have uh, Nick uh, Bannett, who did play some a year ago. Ohio State, of course, quarterback is the big, big spot. You know, who do you go with? And trust me, Ohio State has options when it comes to great quarterbacking. How do I know this? Just ask the college football team out there that doesn't have one real good quarterback. And Ohio State has two, three if you count, um, you know, Miller, who's now a wide receiver. At first, I thought, you know what, go with Cardell Jones, okay, because he played the last three games after the injury to Barrett, beat Wisconsin in the Big Ten title game, and won the two um, college football playoff games. To quote Pike from the 2009 movie Star Trek, I dare you to do better. Well, I look at that perspective, but in the end, I changed my mind and go with JT Barrett. The reason was because his completion percentage was about 65%. Jones was 50. Also, too, Barrett had more yards per carry, seven, as opposed to Jones, who had six, or I think about five, and plus two. Um, you know, to me, Barrett is the faster of the two, and I also believe, too, that um, you know Barrett handles the ball better. Three fumbles last year for Barrett, but did not lose any of them. Jones, in his limited time playing, had five fumbles and lost three. So I feel a little more secure right now about Barrett. But then again, whoever Meyer goes with, who he still hasn't named the starter yet, can't go wrong either way. Quarterback isn't a problem at Ohio State. And neither is fine defense. And last year, they definitely stepped up when they had to. And you returned the All-American in Joey Bosa. 6'6", 275, probably the best defensive player in college football. He is a sack machine, 13.5 sacks a year ago. And how about seven sacks his freshman year, not entering his junior year? Um, if he comes back for his senior year, I think he's have his head examined because he is ready for the NFL right now. And Adolphus Washington, defensive tackle, he returns, and he is a senior. But up front, of course, you have to take into account that they will have some new talent up there. And, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, you can't keep everybody from that team from a year ago. So, you know, you'll see some you know, you'll see some different guys in there. You know, Sam Hubbard, a redshirt freshman, he'll get his shot at playing on that side as well. But you do lose Michael um, Bennett at defensive tackle as well as uh, Steve Miller at defensive end. Linebackers, probably their deepest area. Buckhouse will be very solid there with Joshua Perry, 95 tackles a year ago at weak side linebacker. Outside linebacker um, will have Darren Lee, 68 tackles as well, including seven sacks. So you return three, uh, two of the three linebackers and the secondary. They return just about everybody, um, including the safeties. Bond Bell, 79 tackles, could be All-American this year, six interceptions. And um, also, two Tyvis Powell at six foot three inches tall, pretty tall guy right there in the uh, secondary, and he had 60 tackles a year ago and four interceptions. So 10 Oskies amongst the safeties for Ohio State, and you return Eli Apple, the corner, very athletic, 41 tackles, and he had three picks. So three of the four returned in that area, and if you're looking at Ohio State as far as recruiting, they did not slow down there. Their number one recruit, in my opinion, is Justin uh, Hilliard, six foot even, outside linebacker, will probably be a part of that linebacker rotation. They got him out of St. Xavier, in Cincinnati. So he stays in the home state. And again, Justin Hillier, the five-star recruit, should make an immediate impact. Schedule for Ohio State, it is tailor-made toward getting back to the um, national championship. This year's national championship title game takes place at Glendale, Arizona. Of course, big thing is to try to win the Big Ten first. Game of the year in the Big Ten, you can see it right there. Uh, it is Michigan State, the Spartans, who this year will be as talented as they've ever been under uh, D'Antonio. And, of course, quarterback Connor Cook. The games in Columbus last season, Ohio State absolutely wrecked Michigan State's great defense and scored nearly half a hundred in that game. Don't forget about the season opener, Labor Day night against Virginia Tech. Could be a dangerous game for Ohio State. They'll be at a handicap without four players whom weeks ago Urban Meyer suspended for the opener. Unfortunately for Ohio State, that includes Joey Bosa, who will not play in the opener. And also, too, they will not have two H-backs, you know, in Wilson and Marshall. And wide receiver Corey Smith will not play in that game either. So that game at Blacksburg, that Labor Day night, I think Ohio State will win, but it'll be a little bit tougher. Remember, Virginia Tech is the only team that Urban Meyer has beaten in regular season play in his three years in Columbus. Barring 
a slew of major injuries or even more suspensions or the other team just playing the game of their life or an act of God, I cannot foresee Ohio State not playing in the college football playoff. My official show will come out for the uh, playoff prediction show on September 2nd. Make sure you check that out. I think you can pretty much put the math, the two and two together, that Ohio State is going to be a part of that playoff. And on September 2nd, I'll reveal who I think is going to win the national championship. Ohio State, though, they have enough weapons, good enough coaching, enough talent to win the whole thing again. Take it easy.